Welcome back to my channel, To The Being Mindful Movement. In today's session, we'll be focusing on strengthening our core and providing relief for any lower back discomfort, right from the comfort of our hammock. I'm Hannah, your aerial yoga therapist guide for today. Let's get ready to fly and heal. So we're going to practice with our hammock at the high level height, which is at the height of your hip bones. We're going to get ourselves inside the fabric to start off with into cocoon. So grab one edge of your fabric, I've just found it there, and then sweep your fabric side to side like a flag so that you can see the whole length of your fabric. Turn your back to the fabric as you bring your hands behind you, you're hooking your thumbs into that front edge. Stay forwards of plumb line. Plumb line is that center point between the two pillars of fabric. So I'm forwards a few, few steps. And then we're taking six handfuls. So I'm reaching my fingers long, gathering the fabric into my palm. That's one. We're doing five more. Two, three, four, Five, step back until you are stood under plumb line. Hands need to be a little wider than your hips. Releve up onto your tiptoes. Stay tall and strong on one foot as you hover the other knee. Push down with your hands and gently drag the fabric behind the back of the knees. Reach your arms up high, grab the back edge of the fabric and then pull the fabric like angel wings and then gather the fabric around your whole body. Make sure that the fabric's above your head and then start to curl and roll your way down. You've got your head, your shoulders inside the fabric. Now kick one foot into the front edge and lengthen the fabric out so that you find your whole body inside the fabric known as cocoon pose. Let's just take a pause here. Feel into a sense of weightlessness a sense of being literally cocooned by the fabric. Your hands might be resting on your belly or crossed over your heart space or dangling out the top edge. Let's pause for three breaths. I'm choosing to breathe in through the nose and a gentle sigh away through the mouth. Last breath here. And then go ahead and reach the arms out the top edge. I'm actually taking my thumbs to the inside of the top edge of the fabric and extending the fabric as well. You don't have to do this. And then I'm going to interlace my fingers, keeping the index finger pointing so it's a bit like a gun shape with my hands. And then I want to press the heels and the shoulders and the back of the head down lightly into the fabric so the hips begin to feel lighter. And then start to sway your heels and your hands in the same direction. So you create a long arc shape, like the shape of a bow, sometimes referred to as a banana shape. And then inhale, come back to center. We're doing this slow and steady. So as you exhale, bow in the opposite direction. And then as you inhale, come through to center. So these side sways are moving with the rhythm of your own breath and it's slow and controlled movements so that everything comes from your center. Remember to lightly press down through the back of your head, your shoulders, your heels so that your hips feel a little lightness in the fabric. Remember to keep swaying with the rhythm of your breath. If you can remember which side you started on, let's go for at least one more round. So I've got one more round either side now. and then back through to center and just let your whole body relax. I'm gonna actually undo the bind of my fingers and just let my fingers drape over the top edge and the 
forearms drape over the top edge of the fabric, the elbows are bent, and I'm just letting my body gently soften inside the fabric here. One more breath, let everything go with that exhale. And now we're gonna kick the heels out through the front edge of the fabric, bring the fabric behind the back of the knees, reach the hands to grab the back edge high, and then roll your way up, pulling down with your hands so that you come to sit tall. Arms dangle around the outer edge of the fabric and just let your head dangle, known as floating child's pose. It's really important to make sure that the fabric has been pulled right up behind the back of those knees so that you're in a seat fully contained here. I've allowed my shoulders to gently be caught by the front edge of the fabric and the arms are wrapped around the back edge, gently letting go through the fingertips. Again, one more breath here as you exhale, you might even do a little gentle nod or Turn of the head gently. And then roll your way up to sit tall. Grab the fabric nice and high, firmly grip by bringing the fingers into the center of your palm. Hug elbows in, press down through the thighs and try to really slowly, controlly land your feet to the earth. I'm gonna come all the way out of the fabric and step just a little in front of plumb line. So we're gonna hook one of our ankles inside of the fabric with the fabric behind us. And we're gonna just work into opening up a little through the quads and also through heart space. We're building up to a bit of a peak pose today. So we wanna open quads and heart for that peak pose of chandelier pose. So I'm just checking out the fabric is behind me. We try to do this with as little turning of the head as possible, but that's okay if you need to. Bring the weight into your, actually doesn't matter which foot, just bring the weight into one of your feet and spread the toes out wide on that standing foot. A little micro bend in the standing leg always can be helpful to feel a little stronger here. So I'm gonna hook one ankle into the fabric behind me. I'm gonna take hold of that ankle Kick it into the heel first, feel stable without gripping onto the fabric. The idea is that we're not going to hold onto the fabric until we feel safe. So we're not using the fabric actually to stabilize us, we're using our core and our leg strength. I'm just going to check the fabrics there. I have got my foot a little caught, so I'm just going to do that again. And then I'm going to check again, kicking the heel in and then placing the foot inside the fabric. Now, if that's impossible to do, just a little side note, you can do this from the ground, come onto your knees and then bring that ankle inside the fabric. Then you'll have to press down onto your hands, kick onto your standing foot and slowly lift your way up. All right, so hopefully we've all got to this standing balance with one of our ankles inside the fabric, micro bending into the standing leg. Take your time to hold onto the fabric. I'm gonna bring my arms up, thumbs are turned in, fingers are out and try to turn the palms up and see if I can grab the two pillars of fabric without too much hassle. So again, keep your eyes forwards focused, kick the heel in so that the fabric comes closer. Once you have the fabric firmly with your grip, then you can hop with the standing foot and you'll gently swing back roughly to plumb line. You can do that a couple of times until you're under plumb line. Okay, so I'm gonna stay holding on for this. As you're stood under plumb line, begin to straighten more through the standing leg and just feel into pushing your hips and your weight back into the fabric. The moment I do that, I already start to feel a deeper connection to quads in the front of that thigh with the knee bent and the ankle in the fabric. I'm gonna play around with that. So I'm gonna to start to bend a little through the standing leg and try to direct that knee down towards the earth and actually behind me. So I'm just inviting you to explore sensations here. Go to a place where you feel sensation, but not feeling pain. There may be some discomfort. Quads for me are always one of the tightest part of my body, have always been. 
uh, so I take things relatively tentatively. And I might explore straightening more through the leg behind me, but the aim isn't that I'm going to attempt to straighten completely through that leg in the fabric. I am choosing to bend a little more through the standing leg, and then I'm also gonna see what it feels like to open the heart and lift the sternum up, but it's kind of a bit of a funky um, pigeon it's kind of a bit of a funky dancer's pose, King Dancer. It isn't that I'm going into the full formation. I'm just exploring how it feels to open a little through the thoracic heart space and kick the leg back a little bit here. And then I might even choose to come back to one of the first variations, choosing to move slowly. I'm seeing if I can connect a little to core and connect to the front of that bent knee, uh, thigh, so into the quads there. And then I'm just gonna come back to neutral, to center, lowering the hands once I feel stable. And just bringing the hands behind me, make sure the weight is firmly into your standing foot and just push the fabric away and come away from the fabric and feel into this stillness, feel into sensations within the body. Wonderful way to connect to now is just taking a little pause, especially after some deep, deep stretching and mobility work on the body. So you guessed it, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna come a little bit closer. I was a bit too far away, but I'm not quite under plumb line. Let's see if I can make this a little smoother than I did on that first side. So changing feet, eyes focused to begin with, straight forwards, little bend in the micro, uh, in the standing leg, micro bend in the standing leg. And then I'm gonna kick my um, ankle into my hand, balancing on a mat on squishy carpet. <laughs> Makes your balance a whole lot more challenging. Okay, so I know that my fabric is quite close behind me. I'm gonna go for it. I felt quite secure on that one. Take your time to come and meet me with the ankle inside the fabric. Press down through the ankle in the fabric. Spread the weight across the standing foot on the ground. Little micro bend in your standing leg. Again, I know that the fabric's pretty close behind me, but try to avoid always checking in, usually that means that you start to actually fall over more. So try to sort of feel into your periphery. Don't move fast. Grab the fabric firmly with a reverse grip. So your thumbs are to the inside, your fingers to the outside, palms face up. Once you've got that firm grip, you can do a little hop and you'll naturally swing under plumb line. All right, once you're there, let's explore. The first thing I'm gonna do is actually push my hips back and just see what it feels like to straighten more through my standing leg and just feel into the front of that thigh with the knee bent. Feel into sensations. Notice what comes up for you on this second side. And in freedom to explore, I advise you to move slowly, step by step. Notice what's going on for you on this second side. I'm gonna explore lengthening more through the back leg, but the aim isn't that I'm trying to create a specific shape. I might explore opening the heart, lifting the gaze. I'm actually sort of dangling here into the weight of the fabric using a lot of grip to open up through shoulders. I'm bringing it back a little bit more to closing. And then once I feel ready, getting balance into the standing leg so that I can release my hands and then bring the hands low behind the buttocks and just push the fabric away. Let's come to stand again and just feel into the two sides. If you're comfortable closing the eyes, you might do that or just lower the gaze a little bit. So we've been building to a pose known as chandelier pose. The next part that we need to work through is working into a pose known as back belt. 
This is definitely more of an advanced inversion, so feel free to check out a few other videos that I have. I'll link them in the description and I'll also add it onto the screen now. A few more videos to help you get here. So we're going to start under plumb line and the fabric is going to go low. I'm just going to turn my back to you just to guide you one more time for those who are relatively new just to see where I'm placing the fabric. So like a low pair of pants, I want the fabric quite low on my hips. I am not aiming to get the fabric under the buttocks. My fabric is quite low today, so I'm not gonna to push too much lower than this. I could have my fabric one notch higher, but I know my head's not gonna hit the ground. I've already test dry, driven it, so I'm gonna be okay. And then at this point, I wanna to start to tuck the sit bones down and forwards, pubic bone towards the navel, lift the heels, and then try to wrap the fabric nice and low. Tiptoe a little forwards and give your weight to the fabric, and then start to lift the hands and widen those knees, coming into a saucer pose. My eyesight or eye line is the same height as my toes. I'm gonna to do that the other direction and continue from there. Uh, so just coming to meet you, see if you can find your balance. And then from here, come through to plumb pose, bring the knees together closer towards your face under plumb line. We'll do a little bit of core here. Can you lengthen one leg forwards? It could be a whole lot higher. If you can, lower it and then bring the knee in. So we're working a little pedal action here. As many rounds as you can over the next few breaths. Don't worry if you're not in time with me. Don't worry if you need to really pause here. Moving, if I can, with a rhythm of breath. Once I stop talking. <laughs> Feeling the quivers of core. One more round. If you need to come all the way up, come and meet again in a few breaths in your plum pose. So from plum, this time I'm going to come back towards saucer, knees wrap around, and then I'm gonna soften through the grip and widen the legs enough to wrap the ankles around the back edge, and then slowly start to lower head towards the earth and bring the arms out to the side, palms facing up. And just taking a moment here to feel a little connection to core, so there's a little bit of awareness of lower ribs hugging in. And then I'm gonna place the hands roughly under shoulders and for a moment, walk them forwards. And then press down and lengthen through the arms, gaze a little forwards. One more breath. Keep the hands forwards and then soften through the arms. A little bow shape through the upper body. Let the head relax. You can come up sooner if you're not super practiced at your inversions. Do come up and take a little breather. Come and meet again. Otherwise, just relaxing the arms again, roughly under shoulders. And then again, I'm going to bring my arms out to the side with the palms facing up and just let them go now through shoulders, through the neck. So at this point, if you wanted to, you can hold on to the fabric. Some of us feel the need for a little more safety and security, but you don't have to. Then you're gonna release one leg out to the side and just relax that leg as well so that the inner thigh starts to relax, outer thigh. So in a moment, we're gonna swing that leg behind us. I am not someone that finds swinging my leg in a semicircle at all comfortable. It will always actually um, trigger immense discomfort in my groin, so I am not going to do that. I'm gonna bring my heel in, bending the knee, then I'm gonna work with bringing the knee behind me and turning my thigh up towards the ceiling and then lengthen my leg behind me. So this may be as far as you want to go. You don't have to add on. You might hold on to the fabric rather than have the arms beside you. 
Another little add-on from here can be bending the leg once again and then bringing the hands up towards the buttocks and interlacing fingers. And then trying to let the hands drop away from the buttocks. So it could be that you add one more final add-on here, which is to bend the knee still and try to hook your foot inside your interlaced fingers. Try to avoid releasing your hands and then twisting to reach towards the foot. If we're doing that, I suggest that you hold back and don't go to this final pose just yet. I'm going to release my foot from my hands, extend the leg one more time, bring the hands up towards my hips, release the interlace of the hands and let the arms just relax down towards the earth. I don't like that swinging around action of my leg, so I'm going to again do this mindfully with my own body, bringing the knee to bend it and then rehooking the ankle. So we'll take a little breather between the two sides. I'm going to reach up, grab the fabric and come through to plum pose. I'm also going to do a little wiggle out through those feet. If you need to come to stand, pull down and bring the feet to the earth and take a little moment's pause. We'll work through to the second side. So bring my knees out to the side, coming through to a saucer, softening the grip and then wrapping legs around the back edge of the fabric. Arms are going to relax down. And then from here, I'm going to bring that ankle around. And then I'm going to either, uh, let's take the leg out to the side. <laughs> let's pause here. And then either you swing the leg or you're kicking the heel in as I like to move through this. And then I'm going to come to pause, extending the leg out behind me. If you feel like you want to add on, maybe you bring the arms up towards the hips, interlace fingers, let the hands drop away from the hips, and maybe explore bending through the knee. I want to see if I can keep my knee turned up towards the ceiling and the thigh turned up towards the ceiling. Then if it's simple enough, you can hook foot inside the hands. And I'm going to go ahead and release. You can play around in these poses for longer if you feel up for it. At this point, I'm going to mindfully bring my ankle back around, coming into that monkey grip. And then I'm going to come back up, grab the fabric, just by those ankles, feet unhook, walk the hands higher, come through to saucer, then plumb, little kick of those feet. We are going to bring our feet to the ground now. So I want to really use my upper body strength to pull down and land the feet. And then I'm going to just take a little back lean here. So it might be nice to take a little sway. Just feeling into a bit of steadiness. You can stay here for as long as you like. So it might be that you'd like to try that again. Or perhaps at this point, you'd like to come through to your Shavasana, either lying on the floor or back into cocoon pose. I'm taking my six handfuls for cocoon.
Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like it below, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Not only will this keep you up to date with my offerings, but will keep content like To The Being free and accessible to all.